Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to give you a checklist for buying a secondhand bike. It also works for new bikes that are at the lower end of the cost scale, like from Decathlon. Um, you're going to check that the bike is safe and that you're not getting ripped off. We are at the end of the coronavirus lockdown. There is a huge demand for secondhand bikes, so the prices are being pushed higher. There's a, a lack of them. Also, people don't want to take public transport and summer is coming. So there's a big demand for bikes. Make sure you get a good one with my checklist. Number one part, the overall framework is split into three parts. All of this is focused on safety. Can you get home safely? Are you putting your life or other people's lives in danger? It's also about pricing. You're looking for whether the vendor is saying the bike is in perfect condition. If you're buying a bike for 60 to 80 euros, you can expect some of the things I go through are gonna flag up, it's gonna have some problems, otherwise it wouldn't be so cheap. But if the vendor's asking for several hundred euros and they say bike in perfect condition, just had a full service, this framework of tests that I will give you will catch them out. It will flag things that aren't right and then you shouldn't be paying that high amount. So you have a possibility of either negotiating the price down or walking away from the bike. So first thing I do is a visual inspection. You can do this even on the advert, the photo of the bike, and you can do it uh, when you kind of approach the bike. Now, why do I have these three stages? Um, it's because if you just go straight to the test ride, you meet the vendor, you get on the bike, you take it for a test ride, then that finishes, you're kind of obligated to make a decision. So I'm giving three stages to delay things basically, to give you more time to find out about the bike, to find any problems, uh, so you're not pushed into making that quick decision. Because once you've done the test ride, you have to make a decision. You kind of get, you take it or you leave. So visual inspection, you're looking at the photo, then you go and when you approach it, what you're looking for are wear and tear, or indications the bike hasn't been taken care of, there's things that will need replacing or yeah, servicing, changing very, very quickly. So for example, are the tires worn? Number one, are the tires worn? Have they got any grip tread left on them? If not, it's not safe, the tire could explode as you're going downhill and you could crash and kill yourself or crash into someone else. Uh, so look very closely at the tires. Look at the cables. Very often if a bike's been left outside for a long time, uh, the chain, the cassette, the cables will have this rust on them. Now, um, on the cables, if it's an old second-hand bike, it, it, they could still work fine. It just shows that it's old. On the chain, that could mean that you're going to slip off. It may, it may slip when you're changing gears or when you kind of push down if you stand up and push down, it could slip and you could lose your balance and smash your face on the, the handlebars. So look closely for rust. Um, another thing to look for, what accessories has it got? Has it got a bell on it? You need a bell to warn people if you're approaching and they step out into the road. Has it got lights on it? Because if you buy the bike and it's night time, you're going to ride it home. You need lights, you need a bell. Has it got a kickstand or are you going you're gonna to be holding onto it? So look for all these kind of indications before you even touch the bike. This will just give you a good idea of whether it's, it looks good enough. Another thing to look for are uh, any cracks on the frame. That's a big deal. You don't want to just walk away if you see that. Or are there stickers on the frame that look like a bit weird, weirdly placed, like they're covering or hiding something. Again, that's, that's not a good sign. So you've done this visual inspection. The next stage is to get your hands on it. And a nice tip here is to kind of touch every part. So a, a quick way of doing this, if, if the vendor's not looking or you're friends with them, is just to kind of lift up the bike and drop it. <laughs> and you should, nothing should fall off, basically. Nothing should rattle. The mud guards shouldn't kind of fall out of place. So that's a very quick way of doing it. Uh, the more thorough way is to start the handlebars and grab both of the brake levers and they should bite quickly They should not go back all the way to the handlebar grips um, I guess on a new bike you could say two fingers is the amount of space there should be between that brake lever and the handlebar grip It should kind of within one centimeter the brake pad should be biting against the rim If the lever goes all the way back and then you can push the bike and you can see the wheels moving slightly the brakes do not work Do not get on that bike that is uh, not safe at all. 
So whilst you're there on the handlebars, what I like to do is check all the gears. I know you're not riding the bike, but just to check that the chain is moving. Often with the older bikes, the gear cable is rusted in certain parts, or there's kind of gunk in the housing. Uh, it's just, or it's just jammed for whatever reason. The, the tension in the derailleur is gone and it's just not moving. So you can tell that straight away before you even ride the bike just by trying the gears. And you know, you look down, look at the gear cage as you're moving those uh, gear shifters to make sure it's moving in the way that it should. Still on the handlebars, give the handlebars a wiggle. There should be no play from side to side. Drop down, grab the front wheel, give that a wiggle side to side. Again, there should be no play. Your momentum needs to be going forward. The bike needs to have a rigidity about it. When the wheel wobbles, it's because the ball bearings are wearing, getting, uh, yeah, kind of disintegrating a bit. Problem's gonna get worse and worse. It also means the braking power will not be as good. I don't know if you notice this when you brake, but the wheel isn't safely, uh, isn't securely in place when the wheel wobbles, it doesn't brake as efficiently. So then I move down to the crankshaft, I grab the pedal arms and I wiggle them as well. If there's any play side to side, just walk away. You do not want to be going to the shop to ask for them to replace the crankshaft and drive chain. Ball bearings on either side, that is a tricky job if they are disintegrating. Even if you replace the ball bearings, it may mean that the crankshaft kind of hole is deformed. So the bike's worthless basically, the frame is garbage. Don't buy it, just walk away. Then you move to the back, Remember, this is still the hands-on inspection. Uh, wiggle the back wheel, again there should be no play. Have a close look at the cassette, really close look. So all of the teeth on the cassette should be like mountains. If they are like waves, then that means the cassette is worn out and it will slip on the test ride anyway, but that's a very bad indication. You're gonna to have to replace the cassette, shows the bike hasn't really been taken care of, it's not really safe. Probably don't buy it, basically. And again, at this stage, you're also looking for rust as well, or anything kind of hanging off. Uh, if maybe the cables are frayed, they don't have that cap on at the end, which makes it tricky to adjust it, and you'd have to replace the whole cable. So you're taking a very close look touching everything, making sure nothing's loose, everything's in place. Okay, final stage is the test ride. At this point, you need to try every gear combination. It amazes me how many people just, when they're testing a bike, they do a little circle in front of the vendor. That's not a test. You have not tried all the gear combinations. Try every one, either side, three by seven, three by six. Make sure it slots into every single gear. And you can hear it, and you can feel it, and you can see you can see it as well if you look down. So you're riding the bike, you're listening for anything out of place. Is there any rattles? Is, there a, is the gear brake pads uh, chafing against the wheel? Is, does anything not feel or sound right? This is the time to look for it. Check out the accessories, check the bell, check the light. Uh, when you're braking, try each brake separately, uh, but not too hard on the front brake, obviously. But the braking should be uh, kind of more powerful, the harder you brake, the faster you should stop. You should feel that you're, you're stopping. So, you know, try the brakes under pressure. Right one first, then left, and make sure you can stop quickly and efficiently. This is the most important thing to test on the bike, that the brakes work well, because you could kill yourself or kill someone else. So, that's my three-stage test. This is all in my book in the link below. So if you need a visual, uh, like a written explanation or some sort of document to take with you when you're buying the bike to remember all of this, check out my book. It's three euros. Um, if this has been useful, give me a thumbs up. Any questions, put them in the comments below. Thanks.